Uh, what's going on, guys? My name is Bear DeGidio. We are back with another episode of the Jackson Podcast. I'm sitting here with the greatest co-host of all time, Twitch. And Twitch brought us a very special guest. Twitch, it's been an amazing uh, 2024. So before I let you uh, continue this podcast, I just got to tell you, the Jackson Podcast is phenomenally ecstatic. Like, what is the word, Loco, that we saw in the Jackson Podcast Discord? Ecstatic? Uh, unprecedented. Unprecedented with how good you've done you, uh, your moto show on the Jackson podcast. Just so you know, before we announce your name, I gotta, I gotta give Twitch his flowers. Do we, uh, do we <laughs> vote for ourselves? Is that how we win? Well, you won podcaster of the year. So big round of applause yeah! for Twitch. <laughs> do I get a belt or anything? Like what do no. I get? I just need so, subtitles. <laughs> so actually just say his name real quick so we could do that. So we, we make sure the audience knows he's Oh, here. we have Blake Bilko Williams. Hey, Bilko. Yeah! How are you doing? Thank you for coming, brother. Thanks for having Thank me. You. I've never eaten breakfast with you. First time we had breakfast, and I find three hairs in a cookie, huh? Yeah. It wasn't I think cookie. it was him sabotaging me. He's a little prick. Yeah, I do that stuff. He's been a little prick since I met him since day one. It's 20 years. Oh, I can imagine your guys' relationship. At some point in the podcast, I'm going to have to have both of you stand up and take a photo right here together <laughs> so, that, so the audience can see <laughs> how, how I've been rolling around all morning. With Dumb and Dumber. But just to let you know, so your uh, podcast, like the Moto Shows, You've done 300% better. You have an amazing audience. The, the moto industry, the freestyle industry, supercross industry, whatever industry you want to attribute it to is really behind you. And we have the analytics to show it. Nice. People are very excited. The show's growing twice as fast as we thought it was going to grow. We're obviously signing up for another season. 2025, we're coming. So we just want to say thank you. We wanted uh, the audience to know that as well. So, so we appreciate all your, all your hard work. There's some, you learn something new every day. Huh? He's a people pleaser. Yeah. He's a people pleaser. Yeah. He doesn't seem like a guy who cares to please people. Well, no, he does. Certain he does. people. Especially, especially the ones close to him. Yeah. Seems like he wants to do everything his way. It, it is my way most of the time. His way or the highway, but he's always helping you out at the same time. Yeah. I like that. How long have you guys known each other? 20 years. The first time I met Bilko, he snuck into Krusty Tour. a Krusty Tour show in Australia. And how old were you? 13? No, I was like eight, I was like 18. He was 18, but he looked like he was 13. Yeah, I did. He still looks like he's, like, he looks like he's 18 now. 24. Yeah, he snuck in. He filmed this whole experience. He was in the locker room with us, just hanging out, talking with us. I was like one of the riders, yeah. We made fake armbands, snuck in. <laughs> we're backstage with Deegan, Fice, Twitch, just our heroes. Like when we had gnarly security at the time. Like mm -hmm. when we went to, like back then, like when we would go sell out these shows, it, they would say we would sell it out faster than like the boy bands. Like, yeah. Like gnarly concerts, you know? Yeah. Like, like when we would do Krusty Tour back in the day, like Moto was so big. And uh, it was just funny. He just he's just sitting in the locker room next to me, talking to me forever, showing me photos. Like I thought he was someone's kid who was with the tour. But <laughs> him and all his buddies snuck in, and they're like our biggest fans. Showing him mini bike photos, probably. Yeah. And then I come back the next year. He's doing backflips on fifties and like what? What was Sh Soli on? Soli was on like a ninety or something, right? That was the next year. I mean, Sinclair it was you, were doing Top Dog, Sinclair, yeah. and Soli, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, these dudes were fucking killing it on pit bikes. And then the next year we come back and they're riding dirt bikes and they're better than all of us. Like, <laughs> come out swinging. <laughs> I, I can't imagine those tours, like going down to Australia with that crew. Who would go on those tours with you? It was me, Feist, Deegan, Twitch, Hart, Deegan, Feist, Knight, uh, Nate Adams, Mad Mark uh, for a bit, Clifford, Kinnaid, Flying Hawaiian. Who else? Dan, uh, Dan Kennard. Yeah. Um, Chewy, Maddo. Yeah, it was big. At like, first it was all the Americans, like 2002, 3, 4, and then 2005 they had a bunch of Aussies and then – what was your first year on the actual 2005 tour? on a big bike, 04 on a pit bike. Yeah. And this kid, he surprised me so much. I was like, this kid's like gnarly. And literally every single one of my buddies that's Australian is really crazy and really gnarly and not scared to get hurt. Is that, yeah. is that like an Australian thing? It is. It is. Yeah, every single one of them. Jacko's wild. Cam's a little bit more sensible, but he's still got Yeah, hurt. but back Maddo, in the day, Cam Maddo's was wild. like, Cam didn't care. Cam yeah, he just, just got a little him. older and got really hurt he a couple times where he got smarter than you guys. Yeah, Maddo, Maddo <laughs> and Jacko, probably myself, are on a pretty wild level. Adelberg's pretty conservative. Yeah, and that's being, why he's still in the game. Adelberg's not. I, I feel yeah. like Adelberg's still at the top of his he's, game. He's, he's at the best he's ever ridden. He he eased into it. He was smart. He didn't have too many injuries back in the day. I remember riding before 09X games with, at Nate's place, with, and he was riding there. And yeah. he, was still, he was starting to do X-Fighters then. He was good and competitive, and now he's just dominant. He's got the most medals out of any Aussie rider. Does he really? Yeah. How many do you think he has? He's got 18. Damn, that's what I have. Seven, I think I have 17. Oh, he's got you, mate. He got me. He has 17 X Game medals? Yeah. Do you only count X Games? I have my other ones that just, they're all. They're not really medals at the other ones. They're usually yeah. trophies. Yeah. Yeah. 
what is it with Aussies? Like you guys, you have like the Lawrence brothers, like you have like some legends in Supercross, you have legends in freestyle. I feel like Australia has pr produced a lot of riders. Supercross is a little harder to get into. I mean, oh, we don't have the talent. We've had Chad now, the Lawrence brothers, had Michael Byrne, uh, a couple other riders. But uh, freestyle, like all of us just grew up on a farm somewhere and rode in the backyard with a lack, lack of parental supervision and then just just progressed to where we are so and you look back in the day like early due to a days the bmx dirt was dominated by aussies they mm -hmm. have like 12 riders in the final and be the whole seven, eight, seven be or eight aussies. of them would be aussies yeah Corey bowen gutler parslo yeah. dave dillard i mean yeah there was a bunch of them so many good dudes so yeah. many good so many gnarly athletes have come come out of australia i think the bmx has got there quicker because you could just throw your bike in a suitcase and show up to the event moto takes a little bit longer to get you know somewhere set up with a mechanic bikes and traveling with all that stuff around yeah. so it took us a little longer to break Mm -hmm. one thing even when you bring up those tours i feel like the audience that grew up watching you guys like freestyle motocross like these icons these pioneers like you're saying like they grew up on crusty demons dirt and yeah so before yeah. social media you'd never see that let alone in australia let alone pretty much anywhere so when it came to town it was like motley crew was in town yeah there was like that's what it was like like out, that's how quick we were selling show, out arenas after the show there'd be like five thousand in the crowd just people doing burnouts on street bikes and that just waiting for these they, guys to come would, out and sign like just just to show their appreciation they would rip all the seats out of the stands and throw them at us down on the field like dude yeah. remember that one year they, they <laughs> flipped show over our a appreciation they, dude they flipped over a couple of cop cars and yeah. just, they're just so stoked that we were they're doing shows like Perth every year they ride in Perth, but we have the the coffin cheaters the bikies usually show up for that and they're our security so they, they don't really come backstage <laughs> remember for like they would rock we would be like driving the van they'd be rocking the van we're like fuck is this thing gonna flip over like it would be gnarly as soon as the guy lands the last jump we all pin it back to the pits in perth and they'll jump the fence they'll tip all the ramps over get a bunch of people on each end and they're spin the ramps crawling around. up on the airbag remember that year in perth when the dudes fell off the airbag and a couple he, legs got broken he like, was he was sitting on the airbag and he got like blobbed bounce someone jumped off the top of the ramp on the airbag and seat bouncing the other dude off and he broke his femur gnarly i mean anarchy yeah just the fans yeah. just go crazy in oz dude it's, it's it was, rad i love going to australia and then back then like you know we'd be driving the rental cars between stops doing burnout speed and the cops are like oh yeah the demons are in town yeah you can get away with we it. got kicked out of every hotel we had they had to start buying <laughs> they had to start renting us condos and then we got ricked up or then we got kicked out of all the condos then they had to start booking rooms and they couldn't separate use names. Crusty yeah, they anymore. couldn't use any of the names and then somehow they would find out we were there. We got then, told to behave after like when you guys stopped coming over and it was like towards 2008, 2009, like, hey, we're running out of hotel chain. So <laughs> you guys, if you don't behave, we've got nowhere to stay. We'll be in the caravan park. We would like, like Link Alga would go out and he would just throw the promoters. He would go to the promoter's room and literally throw every piece of furniture out the window that was in a room. Phone, lamp, TV, <laughs> Larry bed, was different. What, what, anything, shower what, curtain. What was the uh, what was the reasoning for always having to trash furniture in hotel rooms? Just, we were just assholes. How old were you? I was probably yeah, like 22, 23. 20, I think 21. 20, 21 when I first started going over there, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who originally put all that together to go to Australia? Uh, so Foreman actually, and a couple of others did the Perth show first, the All Crusted Out tour, and they thought maybe 5,000 people were going to show up. Like 35,000 people showed up. Police no helicopter way. came. There was Not riots. Right. 35,000 people showed up to like the that. first one in Perth. And, and yeah. they were hoping to get 5,000 people. And it was there. just in like a big outdoor, it might have been a speedway, but there was a couple of dirt jumps here. And, and like Metzger's like, hey, come here, I'll get my helmet out. And just the half whole the crowd, crowd just, just rushes in. Like, what like, year was that? 03, maybe 02. Uh, uh, probably 02. Maybe 02. Yeah, maybe yeah. 2002. Videos were at an all time high. Oh, People dude, were watching still it. VHS. But tapes. You, yeah. you didn't see that till the next year when the video came out to see how crazy it was because you didn't have social media. You didn't have Facebook. Yeah. You didn't have MySpace. You didn't like even have DVDs like then. No, I nothing. Think. What was the time difference on a video? You guys would film for like six months, then put out a video? Like a year. Crusty. At least, we probably. didn't even have a, like, you didn't have Hood Rich out yet. It was just basically Crusty, then maybe Steel Roots, and then Motor Terra Firma. Yeah. Yeah. So there was only maybe like three or four moto vhs tapes that have come out a year and most people would film all year and around christmas time it was just open season yeah and then early. that's when you went over there you didn't have you hadn't had well, the only reason i got event, on right? tour is because mike sink bars was kind of hurt going into the tour and he was like the big whip guy and back then like my whips were pretty good and he's like hey he's like i want you to come in and fill in for me when it's my segment like he would still go out do a ride do some tricks and then like halfway through they're like hey i'm calling out my buddy twitch he's gonna come out here and do the whip for me and that's was basically my intro to Krusty Demons, like for the tour. And your first tour stop, who was on the team with you? 
Uh, it was Hart. There you go, um, Feist. Oh, Tommy Guns. Guns. Feist. Huh? Did you do it with Tomcat? Yeah, Clowers was there. And, uh, um, Flying Hawaiian. Trevor Vines, was he there? I don't know. I don't um, remember. It was, was, it was a stacked field. Like, it was like all the dudes of who the dudes were back then. Yeah. You know, like, the and stuff, how'd, how'd you get mixed in with them? That's, that's when I snuck that's in. That's when he snuck <laughs> in. Okay, so event. I was racing like Supercross on my 80 in the same stadium. So I kind of knew my way around, but I just watched them walk in and show their wristband and then got the color. I went to the news agency, bought some colored paper. Cut it up, put a little logo on it with some some texter sharpie, and then <laughs> here we go. Bro, I can't even imagine like because obviously I grew up watching a lot of this stuff and grew up watching action sports. But tell tell me about the parties because I've heard about these legendary parties like in Australia and Europe after these events that they would fly out you guys to go like host these like freestyle mm -hmm. events and they were kind of like expos or oh, I don't know events. I don't even know that no one was winning anything kind of right. The parties were gnarly over yeah, there back just, in the day. Like it was just, just show stupid. up and they bring out a tray of fifty Jack and Cokes and then. Disco biscuits, you name and it. <laughs> who was in charge of throwing these parties? I don't even know. They I, were just paying us to show up, so we would just go. Yeah, we pretty much just run it as soon as you got there. Like the bar <laughs> staff knew who you were, and it was just open <laughs> season. Is it? Do you feel like motocross and freestyle motocross is the same right now or no? No, hell no. No, definitely not. That was like freestyle back then. Was like the wild west. It was like a rock band coming to town because like no you, one wanted to be a part of what we were doing. Yeah, back you then. were kind of shunned from the industry too. You were the wild childs, and um. I kind of got to where it was just starting, I wouldn't say corporate, but they were trying to clean it up a little bit. And there was they wanted less carnage, obviously, because you can't do that forever. Yeah. But it's kind of what the brand was built on with the Krusty Demon. So, you know, I played up to as much as I could without getting into too much trouble. But before I come around, those guys were those guys were wild. Yeah. We would be driving down the street, autograph signings. I remember Morrison one day, he like pissed in a bottle or in a cup <laughs> and these chicks were driving next to us and he's like watch this like he was talking to this chick the whole time like it was just like a weird thing and we're driving down the road and there's video footage of it he's like watch this he throws the piss out the window it goes in her window and just blast her dude like so <laughs> gnarly so bad. and we we're just like oh my god like that's like what we would do all day long like we we're we would piss in bottles at warp tour and we would like to say warp morrison tour. would call people up to the fence and we would you know when you'd step on a bottle and spin the cap with your foot, how it just sprays everywhere, just six, seven in the morning, people standing in line, just cover them with piss. Like I we, had nothing to do with this. We were spot. idiots, dude. Like we were literally like- How did you not get in trouble? I don't know. Is there was no one was filming it on their phone. We were filming it on video, yeah, but yeah. like that was it. I mean, you, you guys were mean? putting it in your videos. Yes. Like we're like, look, like look, they look, were like yeah. we're modern day ourselves. snitching on themselves. Yeah, we we're ratting on ourselves. Like, look what we did. Like <laughs> Scummy used to throw everything out the window when he was driving along the road. Everything out the window, Gatorades, candy bars, whatever, <laughs> sodas, like and take what, one what, sip, this sucks. Throw what, it out the window. What got you excited to want to hang out? I mean, days? just the the riding and then they always look like they're having a mad time, like him and Feist and that used to just laugh so much and yeah, one, I wanted to ride like them, and then two, just started to hang out with them. And, you know, you got dirt bikes in common. You pretty much got everything in common. So, yeah, we just started browing down. I was still a bit young and geeky at first, so I had to, you know. He was pretty geeky when we first met him. I really? just looked, I just looked five, just a normal five kid, years you younger know? than what I did, so yeah. I had a squeaky voice. Like I said, like, I thought he was 13, he was 18 when he yeah. snuck in, you know. So like, then I just let my ride and do the talk, and they're like, all right, he's half cool. We're like, uh, he's yeah. fucking dope. Like, he literally, like, he, once he started riding freestyle, he picked up all the tricks so quick. There was like the one main freestyle dude, Jono Porter. Yeah. He was like the shit. Like everyone mm -hmm. like from over here was like, oh dude, Jono was like, this was like gonna the take Australian over the world. Travis, because you know? he raced supercross, he won supercross races, he had the yep. Pepsi Max freestyle team. And he was gonna come over here and do X Games qualifier. And he's uh step brother, step brother slash best mate. They both did like the first they started flipping yes, before yeah. anyone. And um, he flipped in practice, his, room, uh, his stepbrother, and then he crashed, landed upside down. The foot peg went through his helmet. He went to a coma for a week. And Jono said, no, I'm going to race from now. I'm looking to do freestyle. And then sure enough, later that year, he died in a, a start straight incident, 40 guys going along. So, But he was going to come over here and, and take on X Games because he won the Australian X Games. Did you ride that? Planet X in Sydney? I think it was indoor. Yeah, 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 I did. Yeah. That was my first trip to Australia. Me yeah. and Metzger came over. Yeah, yeah. He he won that one. He did the flip in the contest. And that, that was the first time I seen him flip was there. And it was yeah. like the normal ramp propped up at like 15 feet. Like it was super short, yeah. I remember. Like I was like, damn, it's it's possible. Yeah, so he taught it. Like he raced Supercross, and that's when I was racing Supercross too. And my best mate, Cam Sinclair. So we kind of, Jono took us under our wing, and it was and under his wing, and it was awesome. And 
yeah, he egged us on to flip and we, we, Cam and I flipped the same day as a couple of months after he passed. So yeah, it kind of inspired us to do that. And then once I did the flip, it was just, I didn't tell my parents for like a couple of weeks. I told them I wanted to do it and they're like, nah, you're not doing that. And then, um, a photographer came and put it on the internet for him and I worked from, with my parents. So I got called into the office like that next week and they're like, what's going on here? And there's just a picture on the screen of me upside down. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I did a backflip last week. But <laughs> back then it was when there was probably less than 20 people in the world doing it. So it And was, no one really gave a crap about freestyle then, especially yeah. in Australia. It wasn't like that big of a thing yet. It was like, no, It was when the race. Americans come over, freestyle was huge. But then yeah. when they left, we just do a halftime show at the Supercross. There was no real freestyle sport, like no contests or anything. They started picking up on it, but anyone that wanted to do any good had to come to america yeah but those world x games like the the sydney games and whatnot that was still an x games like qualifier yeah, or it was just no, their own version that's oh the back then it was just it was an australian company called planet x it was called the planet x Extreme it was like their games. own little yeah. thing yeah but it was just basic a couple of ramps and it was a fair few aussie riders and they brought some american riders over but mm. as i said if you wanted to do any good or get a name for yourself you had to come over here what and since we're on the topic of x games like at the time of x games that's like me as a fan Obviously, I can't even ride a, an e-bike, so I, I would never think about getting on one of these. You're too things. busy holding the, the boom box up while you're riding down the street. <laughs> that, was a, that was a bread roll from breakfast this morning. <laughs> but uh, like X Games used to be like the, the pinnacle of what it meant to be an athlete and an yeah. accomplished athlete, as well as someone who even society, like normal society, we didn't need to know about a skater or a freestyle motocross racer or the tattoos. Nothing mattered. If we heard you were an X Games gold medalist, that's like you won an Olympic gold. Mm, yeah. Why do you think it, it this 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 nostalgia, this like aura to X Games is gone. I think a lot is, a fair bit is there with social media. Everyone's seen it before. So now when they go and watch it, someone will do a double flip and like, oh, do a triple flip. And there's no secrets. It's like yeah. people seen the new trick drop on the gram the week before the contest came out. So there's nothing, there's no expectations. Like what's someone going to do this year? You know, like no one. Best trick like, used to sit there and go, what's this guy going to do? Like, yeah, I you had no, no clue. Like he wouldn't tell anyone. And now it's like everyone, everyone already knows what everyone's doing. You might be able to tell on. in practice if they do like a bit of a seat grab, you're like, oh, you might be doing a body barrel or something. But still, like even the riders who are close to him were like still guessing. You might tell one or two guys, but it wasn't all over the internet for months before. It was literally impossible to keep a secret after like 2012, 2013. I feel like COVID killed the X Games. Just yeah. with it going to like people's backyards, it just wasn't, it didn't have like the... Uh, it didn't have like the wow factor to yeah, it. Like I it think was it just, lost a lot when they took freestyle indoors and just had two 75 foot ramps and a dirt. Yeah, hit. when we used to have like Home Depot Center, like full freestyle courses, yeah. like full super cross tracks for speed and style. And then like I, I get it, like with with X Games being at Staple Center and doing best trick in there and step up, like all that was dope. Like yep. that was hands down the sickest arena for that. Yep. But when you go to put freestyle in there and you have two to three jumps, like everyone looks it's the just same. too gimmicky and just corny. And I feel like I feel like the promoters killed these yeah. live events you yeah because uh, like freestyle it's if you've got a huge course and everyone's doing different stuff it's easy to separate you and the, even the crowd who might not be that educated they can tell like oh i know, I know why that guy won but when you go around in a circle and you all literally ride in the same path hit the same jumps do four flip tricks four four upright tricks there's there's not much like if you don't know if you're not an expert you're like how come he scored better than him? And you just get confused and it doesn't have that wow factor and everyone's doing the same tricks just they're different version like their style yeah. of it you know so, so a regular person to, a heart attack flip and a rock solid flip it almost looks the same you're it's hard to down, separate that when you have just the cookie cutter course yeah do, do you feel like motocross in terms of like the way an event is ran and then you compare that to freestyle do you feel like there should be teams in terms of like twitch enters a team he has two riders they compete and there's only like one or two events a year no nah. it's crazy because like all the supercross guys if you're on the one truck you don't talk to the guys on the other truck we all hang out the whole day we'll we'll talk about you, you might keep your trick list to yourself at a big contest but, but if still, someone's like, looking at a jump like yeah. hey this be careful it, it's bucky it kicks yeah. you at the top like save a little throttle for the top like yeah, we, a bit more we'll pepper like, on that one like you don't want to see anyone get hurt and yeah like, like we're just, down to help each other out and at the end of the day with us it's like whoever rode better is gonna win yeah and, and you're, you're always pumped for each other there was no like saltiness i mean maybe here and there but yeah. if it got really competitive but but between me and you like if if i beat you you were pumped for me if yeah. you beat me i was pumped for you like it is what it is you know yeah. what i mean like but do you feel that because he grew up kind of watching you and looking up to you and now he got to ride with you and then you're you're, you're like respectful you take people underneath your wing because we don't see that in supercross supercross is like everybody hates each other yeah, that's what yeah. I if you wear a certain hat you can't talk to someone in the other hat you know and but in freestyle it doesn't matter if you're monster or rock 
Rockstar, Red Bull, whatever. Yeah. We all practice together. Or we all ride together ride during together. the week. Like, yeah. And then you're like, hey, try this on that trick. Like, I can do it. So I'll, I'll give you some hot tips for it. And yeah. Then, we're like, hey, if you do this, this will look better. Like, it already yeah. looks good. Like, we always help each other out. Like, I feel like everyone in freestyle is pretty much like that. Yeah. What, what about the business of freestyle? Like, you, you kind of paved the way with getting these outside sponsors. You know, you had some amazing sponsors. You still do. You know, shout out to Jackson and the JX1. <laughs> Brand new watch. But, like, how do you see the, the business of freestyle supercross even for you? Uh, from well, when I was coming here. up, those guys had, had were so marketable already. And then, I mean, Australia they didn't even factor in. All the American sponsors were like, oh, they're going to do some crusty to a thing. But in Australia, it was huge. But over here, you know, they had all the corporate sponsors. You're sponsored by what, Echo. Echo, a bunch Panasonic. Of, yeah, a um, bunch of different brands. And this went Panasonic. There and was Target sponsor that sponsored the a bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a lot more outside corporate sponsors is in there and then it had the tv platform for the contest Boost so, mobile like there was a bunch of outside sponsors yeah so those, samsung like yeah those guys already doing that when i came over and had a manager with wasserman um like it kind of just the doors were already open thanks to these mm. guys so it was basically you get a gear deal a shoe deal shoe deals were huge back then yeah now, no stupid. one gets a shoe deal stupid so yeah energy drink shoe deal you know bikes graphics it's funny you just look at the old contracts and it's got a magazine bonus in there sponsor will give you a check if you get an ad in a magazine half get the page, cover 15 page. grand yeah. one page five grand half a page yeah so that's how it's changed like, now like no one even mentions a magazine in a contract no but now you get social media bonuses like oh, yeah i remember when i wrote for weed maps it's like oh if you get fifty thousand likes you get this much if you get a hundred thousand likes you get this much You're like, kidding me no yeah he was so, too high to invoice for it <laughs> <laughs> no I, I was not too high to invoice for it. i invoiced every motherfucking one that might be one of the funniest jokes i've heard all year <laughs> um so with you that's actually really funny so if you, i get high i'm thinking about the invoice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because for people that don't know that that's, that's actually a very funny joke so like when you wrote for weed maps in, in terms of like strategy with sponsors, because I always look at the business side as well. And that's like an interesting point. You bring up a magazine sponsor. Weed Maps is a massive brand. Mm -hmm. They sponsored you. Are they still sponsoring you for motocross? No, no, I haven't, I haven't messed with them for a long time. I sponsored Beerman for a while, but then when he got the Red Bull deal, Red Bull said not. Yeah, so. Yeah. When I told Beerman, go be an athlete. I'm like, yeah, you yeah. can always be a pothead, yeah. but go be a fucking athlete right now. Dude. Yeah, Beerman came on the podcast and talked about that when yeah. he was he was faced with that Red Bull. He said Twitch and Twitch's wife Jeez, actually. Yeah. yeah, came through and really guided them, which is true too. A lot of people, they get caught up on the money but yeah. sometimes sh that short-term money and i'm talking about a year or two years mm -hmm. not long term it could dictate your entire net worth forever because you, yeah. you blew it and like, look at the projects he's done with, with um with imagination yeah and they back him like they and that's what i told him like dude i go yeah you may be getting money more money here but long term you're gonna make way more money being over yeah, here like 100%. it's gonna they're just gonna promote you and build, build your you profile, bigger yeah, yeah exactly so talk to me about that so they would go to you and they would say hey we don't have magazine sponsorship deals but now because of social if you get a post and you tag us and it gets this many likes you get a bonus yeah it would just be like that in the contract and i'm like wow. all right cool i'm like and so whenever i'd post something i'd be like all right i'm gonna make sure this thing blows up because i want to get my bonus like and did they pay your bonuses? Always. Wow. Yeah, they were always good hey, about you're it. You're probably one of the only guys like on that as far as freestyle now, because our contest scene's pretty much dead sort of thing. Why is that? I mean, like X Games now, it's just best trick. There's only six or seven riders. Most of the nine out of ten are Aussie. But um, seriously, yeah. Fun <laughs> fact: thirty, I think thirty-two or thirty-four of the last forty-five best trick medals have been won by Australians. So, Damn. Yeah, and shooting like where's eight the American talent? Are you flexing on us right yeah, now? Yeah, where's the American talent? I, I didn't talent. even get one of those. You so. want to go in the ring after yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of said Kim that sticks. and then you smirk and you <laughs> yeah. look at him. Was there a reason you smirked? Yeah, because we always bring up 09 because I beat him by one point. It's like uh, Dominique Toretto in Fast and Furious. It doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. <laughs> <laughs> I was graduating high school in 09 and I remember that actually. Yeah. What, what did he beat you with? Uh, we were riding freestyle. It was uh, Home Depot Center. It was like uh, it was in LA. Yeah. It was in LA. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I had the I did the paintball tournament there at the Home Depot Center. Oh, you did. Yeah, it was the it was the weekend before or after. Yeah. And so we were there watching. He wanted to shoot me with a paintball gun after that. I was so pissed. So you beat him by one point. Yeah. One point. What trick did you do? Then? Well, it was the freestyle contest. It was actually one of the gnarliest years for X Games. By far the gnarliest. Yeah, we year had for X Games. sixteen riders. You had a gnarly course. You did three 60 second runs, your best two count, and they went 16 down to eight riders. Then eight riders did three more runs, 60 seconds, best two count. And then the final four went into the, the night show for the, the last four. And, and then the so final four, we had three rounds of three 90 second rounds of riding, but you couldn't. Repeat. You couldn't do the run you did in your first run. You couldn't re do the same run for your second run. And then you couldn't do the same run for your third one. They, the judges wanted to see Good, a variety of mixture. Yeah. yeah. I was the only one the whole weekend that didn't have one crash. And you and Nate and yep. everyone else did. Yeah, yeah. And, and you still lost. At <laughs> one point. I, I, so he, I, that was the best I've ever seen him ride a Here's my theory of why I got beat. The night before, he's riding free, he's riding um, 
Best, Best trick. trick. And you did, what, a Flying Dutchman? Yeah, 360, 360 Indy, Indy yeah. which was on the 75 footer, which was the gnarliest trick at the time, I feel like, on a motorcycle yeah. in history. Like, just, there were, there was dudes not even doing 360s, and he's doing hill clicker ones, he's doing one-handed ones, he's no doing... one handed one-handed knacks. He called it the Flying... Why'd you call it the Flying Dutchman? Because you know, in and out has got the secret menu, there's a Flying Dutchman, and all it is is a meat patty, a cheese slice, a meat patty, and a cheese slice. No bun, no sauce, nothing. So, uh, my buddy Kibby, who worked for Geico Honda, he bought one home and he tried to feed it to his bulldog, and the bulldog wouldn't even touch it. So, I figured <laughs> the Flying Dutchman is that gnarly, no one wants to fuck with it. So, that's why you call it the yeah. Flying Dutchman. So, it's a 360 with an Indian air, like double can Indy, double <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what, what, was it it was downside right yeah downside so which yeah. was gnarly because like normally with the three like you need your hips you need your legs like you need everything you gotta stay bike central around. yeah so he figured a way to do it right before x games and uh he did that in best trick on the 75 foot ramp and then our buddy kyle loza did a body varial. It was a body varial it was the the bar hop flip over there i think he called it the um i can't remember electric doom but yeah. he did it the year before off 75 foot and one and then and the then. next year he did it on the 45 footer and so Bilko did his trick, and I'm sitting there with him. Did I ride best trick that year? No, you didn't. I'm no. just sitting there, just street clothes, and I'm like, Bilko lands his trick. He's sitting there. We're all looking. He has the highest score of the night, and I'm like, one rider to go. And we already, I already knew what the other dude was doing. We knew he was doing the same trick as last year, but on the small ramp that was at 45 feet. So Bilko did his trick. His score came in. I looked at him. I go, fuck yeah, congrats. Gave him knuckle well, bumps. So as soon as La Loza landed, and he did the same. Oh trick. yeah, as yeah, soon as Loza like, landed, I go, hey, congrats, dude. You, you just you got won a fucking middle. gold. Gave him knuckle bump. We're like, he's sitting there like, fuck yeah, dude. I, I didn't won. want to like, celebrate too early. And every I single didn't. person in the fucking stadium was like, Bill Cove just won X Games. Like, yeah. stoked for him. You know what I mean? And then the score comes up and Kyle Loza wins. And we all look at Bill Cove. We're like, what? Yeah, I wasn't What the fuck just it. happened? Like, well, I had no clue what happened. Because I'm like, how do you take this trick that you won on the big ramp last year and then you do it on the short ramp? And it's already been done. And he comes out and does something brand new on the 75 footer. Mind you, I nearly missed the podium in 06 with my cliffhanger flip because I did it off the 45. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so. Which was still gnarlier than half the other tricks. Yeah, yeah. So, so he got robbed. He got robbed. Like everyone, everyone in the industry knew he got robbed. If anyone that doesn't know anything about freestyle motocross knew he got robbed that night. So the next night, Freestyle's going down, like you said. He I got crashed. a bonus point for being robbed. He got a bonus point for being robbed. <laughs> the head judge was Eric Johnson from Monster. Now he's, and, the, he's, and, like, he's the one. Oh that, my and I was God. a rock star guy you at were, the time. So in my I head, I'm like, this, oh motherfucker, my God. this motherfucker just robbed me and gave him his... Because he's like, oh, we'll make it up to you. You know what I mean? No, nah, they, they said that, but they put me on a billboard the next year in LA. So yeah. They, they but, so the robbery got you the win. I wouldn't say that. I'd say my right. He rode really yeah. good. We all rode really good. But at you know me being me, I'm like fuck that. They get a monster <laughs> point because I was a rock star guy. He was a monster guy. That's like, the best I've seen you ride freestyle. Though. Yeah, that was like the year where I was like, I I was already winning a bunch of contests that year. So yeah. that's going into that, I was pretty confident. Like, like all right, I'm gonna do good. Years ago, if maybe you think about it. Yeah. It's, what it's, year was it? It's 2009. 15 years ago. It's 2000. Yeah. 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 That's pretty crazy. You guys have been doing this this long. I'm not saying to Robert, that's the only one he hasn't won. He's won Winter X Best Trick, Summer Best Trick. My one regret is not winning freestyle. X Games Freestyle. Because that's the one thing that I've never won in my career. And I was how is that? You're like the most I've always legendary been, freestyle. I've always writer. been right there, second, third. Even um, even the year I won Best Trick in 05. Yeah. I got beat, fourth, I got beat Pastrana and I beat Nate. And then the next day we rode freestyle. And I remember doing my first run and they took two 90 second runs. I did my first run. And I'm sitting in fourth place. And I'm like, how? Like, I went out and I did all my gnarly flip tricks on all the dirt jumps when they were doing all their gnarly flip tricks on uh, the ramps, the typical 75 and 45. And I remember the second run, I was like, you know what? I'm like, I'm just going to do my best run I can possibly do and, and just lay it all ride. on the table. And then I, I ghost rode my bike. I was like, a oh, fuck So that you. was your fault. You ghost rode it. That's where I learned it from. <laughs> yeah. So I, after my last run, I did my trick, came up and threw my bike. And I was like, fuck you. Like, there we go. Like, I better be on this podium right now. And I still got fourth place. That was, I was one of the so first, bad. first posters I seen that was in your garage and you're like, fourth place. Fuck yeah. this. You signed it. And I remember going up on the landing and grabbing rocks and throwing them at the judging tower because I was so pissed off. <laughs> like, Did you get in trouble for that? No. Nice. What are you going to do? Sometimes I didn't care. Yeah, no. They That's, liked it because it was TV. It sold seats. Leave for it to an Australian, by the way, to give the American secret menu of In-N-Out out to the world. <laughs> yeah. What a, what a, man. Well, the thing what is a come with, up. With um, like freestyle, if we had a governing body like AMA or like the NFL or something, we would not have careers. Because, like, you know, no. if we, we go to an after party and we run a mark, <laughs> like if it's a football player, they're, they're out the next day on the front page getting sanctioned, getting fined. And like we're ours, so ours glad. promoted. We're so glad we didn't have social media when we were like oh, yeah. winning contests and doing all that stuff because yeah. I would have posted the dumbest stuff. Like I wouldn't have any sponsors that I have today. Imagine the like one Besides month you're on Crusty tour. 
yeah. how, how did you how did you like that means that brings up a point about sponsors how did you work with people that you're competing against who also have the same sponsors was there ever like crazy competition because like you guys are both monster athletes you guys are both friends was there ever this fear of like we don't see that in most industries where well, like a boxer wouldn't honestly, go like sparring. We, all of us i feel like we always looked out for each other yeah i was like hey my contract's up they're offering me this. What do you get? Yeah. We we didn't want to we didn't want to go undersell each other. Like if you're getting offered two hundred grand and I go take a deal for one fifty, that's just lowering that's all gonna, of our value. Then that'll get cut. So it was like it's like hey, I'm getting ready to resign my deal. Did you resign yours? He's like yeah, I got two seventy five. Like okay, and depending on where you're replacing at the time, you're like okay, hey, I want three hundred or hey, I want two fifty. Like. We, we, I feel like there was a, t a lot of us top dudes always had each other's backs yeah. where we would give each other some info like, hey, or someone would be like, hey, they're offering me this. We'd be like, go up more. It was like the scene in SoCal. Like I could come over and I'd get looked after. I'd ride at Deegan's. I don't know if he liked it that much because I always went riding with Cam Sinclair. He was militia. But um, <laughs> I'd ride at Nate's. But when we did Krusty Tour in Oz, the 06 and 08, it was like 18 weeks and 16 weeks long. So Nate and Adam Jones and that. Whoa. Settle down. Sorry, sorry. Uh, they only had the chance to ride every Saturday, so I'd take my old man's F truck and a trailer, and I'd take Nixie's, Jim McNeil's, Adam's, Nate's bike during the week, and they'd come back and live at my place. So I'd take them riding at the front right, and week, everything. Yeah. So they could actually practice for the four months. Like, and it was almost they'd get back, and it was only three weeks till X Games. Yeah. So, uh, so I'd take them all riding the whole time they were in Oz. So when I came out, I was just like, "Hey, I'm riding at your house," you know. So would you would good. you let everybody ride at your house, or was I didn't have a course back then? It was Deegan in, a, in the beginning. You had the one a little bit in 08 in the front yard. Yeah, yeah, in 08, all I let all my buddies ride my place like yeah and like i remember there was a while there where i like was when me and nate were winning everything i'm like hey i'm like we should ride together every day i'm like it'd be like a contest in the backyard and that was so out of this world for me like being and i was watching you guys and nate was the clean cut guy and then you, I know, was you, you guys militia. always picked on him on, on um crusty tour <laughs> yeah yeah they used to tackle him when he walked out for his intro they spray him with a fire, fire extinguisher. With extinguisher got in his eyes that to stop the show no and oh, then i'm yeah. like i'm like they must hate each other and then they're riding <laughs> together and stuff i'm like oh, well that's, that's like when when like nate was always doing good he was like a robot like you would give yeah. him a, a, a schedule he would stick to that schedule if that schedule was working he did that schedule every single day so i have to learn this trick by the end of the week yeah he wouldn't like, stop till he did it he was winning everything i was doing really good at the time and i like looked at him like hey i go we should ride together every day i'm like if we're riding against each other every day in the backyard i go when we get to the contest it's going to be the best man wins like yeah we're pushing each other every single day i'm like we know we're all doing the same shit we all live really close to each other and I feel like when me and Nate started riding together every day, like we both started, it was like every week it was first or second between both of us. And we would just die laughing like, oh, you got me again. You know, like, and it was fun because we were pushing each other every day. It was like, a, everyone says it's not a contest when you're in the backyard riding with each other, but you're always trying to be better than the next dude. You're always, oh, he did a seat grab, Bindi? Watch yeah. this. Yeah, I'm if do you it get better, bored, you, know? you see someone do it, like, I can do that better. And then if he does something cool, you kind of just put your head down and then pick another trick you can do bigger. <laughs> it seems like the relationship though, like in, in Moto for sure, especially freestyle is like, such a boys club right it's such a dope it's like mma i always compare it because i do see the similarities what's the relationship with a guy like a legend another legend like travis pastrana what's a what's the relationship is that something like hey he's from you know <clears throat> nitro circus and you have all these things going on i think you did like a race with him one time yeah i've done a bunch like, of car stuff with travis what it, like because i don't you are you best friends with travis you guys still cool i'm cool with him I, we yeah. never really hung out like he's always hard to hang out with because he's always been so busy like he'd race supercross and then for, he wouldn't ride freestyle for the whole year and then a month before x games he just knuckle down practice come out win, learn a and bunch then of new his, tricks put his freestyle bike yeah. away for another 11 months but then you know, then he started touring with Nitro, so I got to spend a hell of a lot of time with him and doing like rally these, cross. Yeah, like these all guys that. always how did, had. How did you get linked with Nitro Series? Uh, I was out here doing contests in 2006. Like I, he had knee pads on and he was yeah, giving blows. I was going to town. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he's quite tall. You don't need to kneel down too far. Um, I'm looking at you like you're about to say something. Like <laughs> he hurt his knees because he walked in with crutches, and and then I like right, every time. So yeah, I uh, I went to stay with Mad Mike actually <laughs> on the east coast, and he knew Travis, and he took me down there, and then uh, I started doing stuff in his phone pit this conversation's going nowhere <laughs> um, and then uh, i was He's still the, dumbfounded over here i was on the 110 i was like double flipping his pit and he didn't even see me do it he just heard from someone he's like hey do you want to try a double backflip 360 i'm like oh how and he's like just do double flip but as you're finishing the first flip just look over your shoulder i'm like right i just try i was fearless back then and then did a double backflip three on the pit bike in his pit and he's just speechless like he's trying to flip a big bike i'm like i already did and then um <laughs> yeah and then uh so from there he was like you know, I, you know I kind of impressed him and then i did the cliffhanger flip and uh he was at bartram's house and i was riding at his place and he's on the phone trying to get me to explain it to him he's like we've been trying for three days we can't even get our feet up there i'm like that's easy mate you just jump off catch the bars with your feet 
And then from then on, you know, the next, yeah, we did X Games that year. He double flipped. I got on the podium and, yeah, but he was always so wide open with everything he did. It's hard to knuckle him down and actually spend time with him. I'm lucky after all these years now with Nitro Tour and some of the Rally Cross and Subaru stuff we've done, I've spent a lot of good time with him. And, yeah, he's he's an awesome, genuine dude. He's, uh, he's I think crazy. Trav, too, was, like, super stoked on, like, the progression that Bilko brought, like, to his house, like, not knowing who he was and him already doing all the tricks that he was already working on. He signed the jersey that in 06 and he said a lot of people come to my house but not many, not as many as Nolly is you. Yeah. So I was like, like yeah, that. No, and I'll for start. for Trav to say something like that is like, holy shit, this dude must be gnarly. Yeah. yeah. No, and Bilko imagine. is literally one of the gnarliest dudes in our sport by far. Like 07, I hit my gnarliest point and then I shattered my ankle. I don't think I've ever ridden that good again. No. Like that crusty yeah. tour in 07. But you're still crazy. Like yeah, you still have crazy. gnarly shit. You yeah. still do stupid things. And yeah. like, we're like, how the hell did you just pull that off? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, 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 do some, I do some wild stuff, but it's all in control for me. Even though he's younger than me, he's someone I've always looked up to in our sport just because he's been so creative and like, when he does something, it's never half-assed. It's like, even still to this day, his cliffhanger flips bigger than anyone else I know in our industry. The three, I, I never, when I watch 360s come out and I seen Deegan and Pastrana do them so flat, I'm, like, like, that, that's I'm like, that's weak. how I want to do it. Nah. <laughs> no, when people, when people started toning it down, like there was a while there for when Nate was the only one doing them. I think he backed them off a lot. And they it, were kind of like a big flip whip. Yeah, like, and then um, like a couple of Europeans did them, but they really, I'm like, I'm not doing it like that. If I do it like that, I'm going to stop doing it. So I just wanted to get them as flat as I could. And obviously a, a moto, I mean, I think Patrick Evans is going to be one of the first ones to do it. Or Axel, really, really flat. Have you seen his in the foam pit? Yeah, I seen a little bit. He's They're in, dope. Yeah, yeah. He's um, he was trying to do them right before X Games. He's like, oh, I want to go up there. I'm like, dude, I go, don't. Just do you. I'm like, you're a shoe in right now to win X Games. I'm like, don't go do something that that's something like is do. gonna make you not fucking. You're gonna get hurt before you go win yeah. and like actually mm -hmm. make it. And after X Games, he's like, thanks for that, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I've got them now where I can do them like pretty damn flat but safe, and especially with portable landings. Like a few years ago when they were the wooden steel. You can't land sideways and all on those, so I'd keep it in check, and they weren't as flat. But when it's dirt or an airbag, I'll piff that thing. Flat. I remember the one that always sticks in my mind is the uh, the 120 ramp at X Games, the, the step, step down. down, yeah, where you almost didn't rotate enough and you I were fully the flat. Step on. Like, yeah, that one was gnarly. I'll send you that clip. You can put it yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, we, we're gonna need that. For this the clip is so gnarly. I was rev limiter. I had my knees forward on the shrouds. His bike was. His bike never even got flat. Like his wheel stayed down lower than like the... Yeah, the back wheel never went above the front wheel. That's when you know it's like a flat three. It was a legit 360. And I was lucky it was a step down. I got an extra like five feet dropping and five feet further to bring the rotation around. Otherwise, I would have splattered. That was the same yard, but he nicks, he cased that thing in practice, oh. broke both his legs. He femur, broke it. He broke wrist, his legs like, when he cased and then he bounced off the top of the landing all the way to flat ground. Which was like concrete. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people realize how how dangerous it is to ride a bike. It's gnarly. What, what it you is. guys do. It's gnarly. You guys talk about breaking your bones and shattering. Like I talk about going and eating sushi. Free it's style, just like you another can't day. really have a small crack. It's pretty hard to have a small. Airbag landings have changed a lot of that. You can you can get away with a lot more with airbag landings. I've seen him get away with it right behind me. That that that's all like that was the first weekend I rode an airbag and he crashed behind me. We were like telling each other what trick we were doing. Yeah. And he thought I said backflip knack and I said just one handed knack or something. Yeah. He did a backflip knack, slipped out. I looked behind me. I see him flying through the air. If he would have been on a normal portable landing, he probably would have broke his neck and he would have I would have reached the asphalt after the bottom of the transition. But yeah. the airbag goes for an extra like 15 feet after and it's about you know three foot mm -hmm. thick so you've got a bit of cushion i landed on that cushion but if it was straight portable it would have finished and the ash felt was slightly uphill he would have been would... ko'd he caught up kicked his bar straight hit the jump again i'm like i'm a believer of this airbag <laughs> landing now yeah, yeah i like... mean when you set up you have a, a touring company that does massive events what's it called your, uh, your... ksfmx yeah and, yeah and you set up airbags or portable airbags yeah everyone's basically gone to the airbag now because it's so much easier for like storing uh, traveling, safer. like packing it up, way safer. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent, way safer. Yeah, you just roll it out, turn the fans on in ten minutes. It's it's pumped up, ready to jump. And then when you're done, like at the Supercross, I've only done one of them where we jump in the parking lot, the car park, and then um yeah, roll it up and put it on a drag sheet out in the arena before the Supercross starts. So, Are you trying to have your American accent right now so he can? No, I just you? I just said car park. That's Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so they put it on the start straight and then... Um, His accent gets so bad where he can't even understand them. I can oh go full Aussie. But yeah, then they'll drag, <laughs> they'll quickly set it up and drag it out. Like if that was a dirt landing, you couldn't do it. If that was a portal landing, you, you couldn't do it. You would think like for a guy who doesn't ride a bike and for the audience watching this, like you would think like the airbag like would make it like a little bit harder to land or a little bit more uncoordinated with your balance. No, it, um, sinks a, it sinks a little bit and that's actually kind of good. It's got to give, especially if, it, if it's especially rain. Especially for us with how shitty our bodies are. Yeah, if it <laughs> rains or gets any moisture, like if 
if it's the portable with the wood, as soon as you land, the first thing to give is your tires. It's slick. But with the the Kevlar top sheet on the airbag, it sinks like a foot or two. So your your tires don't have a hard surface just to instantly lose traction on. It sinks into it and basically gains traction. There, there's a few different companies for airbags, and I feel like Bag Jump is like what we ride. Yeah, I literally think the best a- one that we ride. And our buddy Keith Sayers, like he helped develop that bag. Like, hey, it's too soft. Hey, it needs to breathe. Hey, this top sucks. We need to do this. So it's like. We ride the best setups every time we ride. Does that company Bag Jump develop jumps for people's homes too? Is that what people? Yeah, make they these make for? they make airbags. They work with Travis a lot too on the yep. flat bags. They did the Nitro bag that's that's three. It's got three separate yeah, yeah, wedges: yeah, yeah. regular seventy five, next gen, and Moon Booter. Yeah, and that Kevlar top sheet's pretty rough, and you sink so far that when you land, you ride down it. It's basically sandpaper in the side of your boots. Off. Mm. Oh, every when I get done riding, the side of my boots are like shaved. Yeah, it's after all a tour, brand new, like, was, rubber on them. It was str- it was all the way through my soles, and I wear the same boots for like three years because of my cane cool but um yeah so they were literally yeah the socks were sticking out so so talk to me about nitro circus like this is a very I- iconic touring event company in the u.s i don't know where the the height of it is but i know when it first it's started it's pretty low right now yeah, it, 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 yeah. It, i mean it came out swinging like uh, the same promoter that did the crusty tour in australia so melbourne sydney brisbane perth and all the regional shows at the end of 29 he s- split with the crusty contract and just took on nitro and travis and greg godfrey kurt nickel and um Someone else owned Nitro and the Australian promoter did Nitro Circus Live. That was his company. And we did the Oz shows. And I think the second year, third year in Oz 2012, we did four nights in a row in Melbourne, three in Sydney, three in Brisbane, two in Adelaide and two in Perth. Like that was, that's more than we ever did on a Krusty tour back in the day. And then, yeah, every year we toured Australia, New Zealand, then we started going to Europe and it was huge. And Travis obviously toured back then. And then, I mean, COVID kind of shut everything down pretty bad, but, um, I feel yeah. like I feel like Greg Godfrey didn't get enough recognition and respect for what he they, did with Travis and they lost it all when they did the 3D movie. So they, yeah. they lost so much money with the 3D movie that they sold the company to get out of debt, I'm pretty sure, mm. to Nitro Circus Live, the Australian promoter. So he took over the whole Nitro brand basically. But that that's what sucks is because Greg Godfrey's been there from the beginning. Like he used to have like did it global addiction. Yeah, DVDs. global addiction. He's been he's been in freestyle since day one. And I have so much respect for that dude for like just him capturing the stuff on content, doing all the stuff he did with Travis and like helping create basically- He did the great outdoors too, didn't he? Did you know I don't remember. I know it basically helped start Nitro Circus with Travis and like everyone. Like yeah. he's been one of the main dudes that like hasn't gotten the recognition I feel yeah. like he deserves I think for what got, he's done for our sport. Yeah, with the whole split and with the, the movie thing, that kind of screwed him. Like yeah. The 3D movie was so expensive. But then since then, like I think 2017, 18, it changed owners again and then it changed owners again. Like I worked with the same company that promoted uh, Krusty from like 04 since he was, all the way through since to he like, was like 18 or 19. Yeah, until like 2018 when it was the same promoter, same staff and everything. And then over the last few years, it's all changed and now Dana White owns it. But between Dana and the last guy, there's been mm-hmm. like three different owners. But so, Dan- Dana White and the TKO Holdings and whatnot, they bought like Rumble TV, Ridiculousness. They, the Thrill One was yeah, the Thrill umbrella one. company. Yeah. yeah. So Street so Leaks. They, they bought everything, right? Yeah, like everything. their own SLS. They yep. bought that. Yep. And I think they did that because they're trying to create their own like streaming platform that has all these multiple sports. And yeah, which is sports. smart. So, yeah, it's very pieced out right now. It's a great idea, especially because they have WWE, which has the fan base for that Nitro Circus probably demographic. Yep. Is Nitro Circus, do you feel like that was something that could have been bigger than what it was? Like, uh, no, that, I feel like it was pretty it freaking is, big. Like, it, it took advantage it of it when it was huge. And it like when Travis still rode, he was such a huge draw card whether he rode or not. Hey, if did he just he showed up. He, what, the live shows or just, he started the DVDs and basically oh, that's okay. where the, the live show came from. It basically we took the same ramps and everything from Krusty Tour, got rid of one moto ramp, added a BMX ramp. They called it the Giganta ramp because mm-hmm. they couldn't call it Mega Ramp. And then, um, yeah, we just started that. And then obviously they started jumping bathtubs and tricycles mm-hmm. and all the dumb shit. And then, you know, you we don't did, like that stuff. Uh, yeah, I just get hurt doing stuff I shouldn't be doing. And <laughs> I think we all do. Yeah, so <laughs> I steer clear of that. I pretty much got all, every every motor rider was banned from jumping BMX because of me in 2010. I blew my knee out. But what did you do? I you back fl- flipped the BMX, over rotated. I had moto boots and on, and yeah, my foot stuck in and tore an ACL. And you missed the rest of the tour? No, I just missed that one night show. So yeah, it was a bit of a bummer. <laughs> Not too but, bad. But uh, yeah, so that's that's what's you know made it huge. And then obviously Australia, New Zealand is just huge for that market. We just yeah. love our action sports there. And then Europe was pretty decent. The US stuff's never been big. Like they tried to do a crusty tour over here, and it mm-hmm. was '05 maybe. Yeah, I was '04. Cause, didn't it last that long? No, nah, yeah, you were on the buses and that, and it, it folded after a short time. But just yeah, I think the Americans are sport for choice when it comes to sports. Yeah, you know, baseball, football, NASCAR, Indy car 
uh, basketball. We have, a, we have a lot of sports out here. Yeah, we do. And we're and we're kind of overly stimulated with action yeah. sports because we see so much of it. I mean, here in Orange County, just in one week, uh, I have Nija Houston, Ryan Checkler, Twitch, P Rod, yeah, and then I have you know the Lawrence brother. Like you name it, they come in here. There's not all the like, MMA dudes. Yeah, like, MMA, like we have everything in SoCal yeah. in the U.S. and that spreads pretty quickly. Yeah, so yeah. I think it just like overstimulates everybody. I want to know who do you feel is the goat of freestyle motocross? It's Travis. Hands down. Like even, um, like I said, he didn't ride for freestyle for 11 months. He'd be doing his supercross or whatever, or he was hurt. And then he's like, all right, X Games is next month. He'd just go into lockdown, jump in the foam pit, do whatever, come out, win, and then just not ride till, you know, wherever long. And then if you bet him a dollar, he'll try anything. Like 2010 X Games, he, he was already winning after his first two runs. He didn't have to do his third run. And um, I had a bet with him for for five bucks that I no a dollar that I'd beat for him for one dollar one dollar I beat him and then I we broke our collarbone the same week and then he rode and I didn't and then in his last run I said I'll give you five bucks if you do a double flip and he didn't even have to do it and he came out and double flipped and people were saying <laughs> his first two runs oh he wouldn't have won and I'm like if he was in second before his second run he would have double flipped in that run and double yeah. flipped double flipped in the last run there was no way he was going to lose just because he didn't he won without the double flip he still went and done it anyway when he didn't have to like he could just turn it on and. Like, to see the disappointment in him when he couldn't do the triple flip, when him and Sheeny were first practicing mm. that, and he just couldn't get the rotation, and Sheeny did. He was so mad. He's like, I'm just going to have to hand over the reins. And even a month later, we're on the Gold Coast doing a show, and Sheeny was going to double flip, and Travis got a hold of an RM450. He's like, I want to double flip because tonight is going to be the last night that I'll be able to do the biggest trick in action sports in, in FMX. And he goes, this is the last time before Sheeny goes and does the triple, and after that I've got to, I won't be, I've won't done the biggest trick in freestyle. Like he just didn't want to let that crown go. No, he can't. He's so competitive with himself. Yeah. But at the same time, like he would coach people and let them use the foam pit and set up ramps for people to progress to push him like Nate learned to flip at Travis's house yeah and then Nate started beating him all the time and and pushed Travis to be even better but I remember when he got KO'd at Home Depot Center battling with Nate yeah like one of his last like good years of riding freestyle yeah when he did the three under rotate and smacked his face yeah yeah next day showed up faces all swollen scabbed everywhere still rode got second place Nate yeah. won like that was the first year I think Nate beat yeah it was the first time Nate, yeah. there was the 2000 first 2004 it was the was one it at Staples Center. Yeah, because he was on, was, he was on the Yamaha, so I think Home it was 2005. Yeah, it was 04 Home Depot Center. Carruthers did the... Um, Corolla? Corolla. No, you, it was 04 because you won 05. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 04. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Crazy. So, yeah, and like he he was thinking about double flipping then, and he didn't quite. He had it not as good as he did for 06, but he had that massive black eye, and I think he he was so mad he just had to not do the double, and Nate was going to beat him, but he yeah. was he was pissed. Pretty gnarly. What what's your opinion on the Lawrence brothers kind of taking super? They're, cross they're I mean, it's awesome to see an Aussie out there. Obviously, I'm biased, but um, <laughs> I mean. They're both amazing riders and they're mm -hmm. both doing doing so well and their story, you know, traveling to Europe, giving everything up, then coming here and and it's just cool to see. And I think they're pretty humble. I mean, obviously everyone has their different opinions about it, but I've spoken to Jet and Hunter and they're, they're awesome dudes. They're polite. Yeah. I get along with them. Well, I barely ever see them, you know, here. I'll bump into them here and there yeah, and yeah. we'll have a, have a conversation. But um, yeah, yeah I mean, I they're them. as humble as it comes. They're Jackson athletes. And, yep. you know, and they're, they came in here. They super nice to everybody. It's interesting to see how the internet reacts to them because mm -hmm. they are very well liked, but I do see a lot of comments and what people try to say about them, but I don't see that in real life. But the internet's the internet. It's yeah. like Danger yeah. Boy. I love Danger Boy. He gets up there, he talks shit, and then people rip on him saying he's a smart ass and he's arrogant. It's like, no, he's he's a he's a personality. He's a character, and if he says if he says I'm going to smoke that dude in the next race, he'll go out and do it. And if not, he's pissed. It's you remember and, Sean Palmer? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to, he got up at X Games one time and he said, you know, I might have to quit. It's just too damn easy for me. And he <laughs> he literally said, he goes, he goes, you, if you talk shit, you got to back it up because otherwise you look like a fucking jackass. And then so he literally did. You got to back it up, and that's you what do. It, that's what it needs. So if someone's out there talking shit, it's entertaining, and yeah. it is. It, it 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 sparks more interest, like. Oh, why is this dude talking shit? Who's, yeah. who's he going to beat? You know, like there'll be ten times the comments on that one, and fifty percent will be, "Oh, he's arrogant. He's a little dick. He needs to shut up." And then the other fifty are like, "Yeah, he just but, told you guys what's up." But when you can back up your shit talking That's and you it. smoke everyone, and, or best. you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to go make a couple changes. I'll be ready for Moto Two, and you come out and you wax them. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's having that confidence. It, 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 a lot of people are like, "Oh, he's cocky." I'm like, "No, he's just confident." Yeah, yeah, you got to be confident within yourself, and if if you want to go out there and outspoke it, you put more pressure on yourself to have to perform, and yeah. then maybe that's why he likes performing under that pressure so it's fuck you here's what i'm gonna do <laughs> fuck that guy i'm gonna take him out if he comes near me and that's what we're gonna do yeah that's I, racing i feel like there's nothing wrong with that either especially no, if you can back it up and yeah. i love and i love the personality i feel like you're an action sports 
sport. Let people be who they are. That's yeah. the whole beauty of being you, you action sports. There is no corporate. Yeah, like, There's Supercross for so long was so just gimmicky and corny like you couldn't be yourself like yeah or like hey you have to thank all 37 sponsors every time you're on the podium reading off the pit board like yeah like thank this guy that guy this guy that guy this guy that guy and we're like robot boring yeah, yeah. it's stupid people it's know sick. your sponsors they see all of them on your chest on live tv when you're getting your interview yeah. winning. why should you have to name every single person yeah, yeah that, 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 that part is a little aggressive one thing i want to talk about before we bounce right here is this uh twitch best trick Twitch, I, I don't think we've ever reacted to this, but I want to I wanna kind of figure out what was going through your mind during this one right here. Let me pull this up. Being back in Oz, I didn't even get to watch this event live. I saw the replay like three days later in a pub. Not that Look one. at the famous stars and straps. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're having technical difficulties That right was now. forever ago. This is uh, 2005. Yeah, 2005. Like, 19 Australia. years ago. Yeah, this is 19 years ago. This is uh, the Staples Center event. It's, it was in the in the car park. In the parking yeah, lot. Yeah. Though, yeah. Car park. Oh, wow. Parking oh. lot. Car park? Sorry. Parking lot. Car park? What's that? <laughs> car park. Um, yeah, one thing about this event, I was at this event with uh, Sheckler, actually. This was like one of the first X Games I think I went to. That, oh, I think this was the first one in LA. Bamberg's bike. Just I think he done the raids on the up ramp. He's like, good, 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 yeah, good. that was gnarly. Yeah. It was funny because when we got to X Games, everyone... You yeah you weren't there. Everyone yeah. was bitching about the dirt jump. Everyone's like, oh, we should take this thing out. No one's gonna flip it, or no one's gonna do yeah, anything cool. <laughs> and I remember me and um, Miller were on the Hawk tour. Yeah, and Hawk I was tour? doing yeah the Hawk tour the Hawk tour. tour. <laughs> <laughs> and I was I was doing big flip whips, and I was like, what can I do different that I'll, that I'll be able to do there? You know? Yeah. And I remember I was like, I'll try a flip whip, no footer to one hander lander. And but when we got there, everyone was like, oh, we're gonna tear this jump down. Like no one's gonna flip it. No one's gonna do anything. There's the general. And I was like fuck you, I'm going to flip it. Like, yeah. I'm not letting you guys get rid of this thing. I'm like, I'm going to flip it. As soon it. as they said that, it's like, all right, I'm flipping it. What now. was well, Deegan telling you No one you right was there? really flipping dirt jumps then. Everyone was only flipping the ramp. Like, even Pastrana didn't flip that thing. He Nate did that flip bar that spin. Thing. He did the bar, did the bar spin thing on, like, the two-footer. Yeah, yeah. The, the backside lane that I used to flip on a mini bike. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, look at that crowd in L.A., dude. That had dude, a, it was feel incredible. Huge. And that was the first time I really won something big. Like, that was X Games. Like, that was when Pastrana and Nate Adams were like winning everything, like the baddest dudes there yeah. were. Were and you still on militia at this time? Yeah. What yep. is that? What was Deegan telling you right here when you come off the jump? That's pussy shit. Yeah, he told <laughs> me to quit being a pussy because I was supposed to do a no footed to one hander and I only did no footer, but my score was even still sitting now, in already, first place with that. In the lead. Yeah. So, and, and what was militia making at this time? Just t shirts? Because you have Etnies, oh, you have Sobe, oh, you have five. Thor, you have Echo. I don't know if they had the licensing Echo. agreement yet with, um, who were they? La Jolla? La Jolla Group. Yeah, I don't know if they were with La Jolla Group then, but when they were at La Jolla Group, they were making everything. But back then, it was just like hats, t-shirts, hoodies, The same stickers, couple of logos like, on everything. Yeah, 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 exactly. It was the same same stuff. But for me, that was like my peak of like winning something. Because that was like and the then first you won big a, thing I won. Uh, best trick at winter the next year. Yeah, and then a few months later, I won best trick. Do you ever miss X Games at that like that level, or do you feel like it can't? You I saw? think we all do. I, I think every single dude misses X Games it's at like that peak right there. The prize, like there was step up, there was best whip, best trick, um, um, yeah, freestyle, and you know, as I said, there was a lot more riders. Like now, they they usually have six or eight riders in best trick only. Whip, I think, is ten. But you know, when we had freestyle in 09, there was sixteen riders. I think two thousand and ten, there was maybe ten guys, but. Like if you want the best of the best, you got to invite as many people and eliminate yeah. it down. So, especially with the talent pool that we see in today's time, with everybody making content, there is a lot of talent still out yeah. there. Yeah, it's crazier than it's ever been. The trouble is now with X Games, like I think with the the money and stuff and all that, um, and it's not being as, as big a deal. Like a lot of the Europeans won't even come, even mm. if they're invited, because because it's not they, worth it. They're yeah, not going to make the, they fly over and pay a mechanic. They're paying to come to X Games to do a TV show. Yeah, you know. Do you still have this Echo bike? Yeah, yeah it's hanging, hanging in my warehouse. Oh, really? Yeah. And is it, how, how old is this bike? You it's think? a 05. Do you still ever ride it? Nope, it's hanging from the rafters. Really? Yeah. Collecting dust. Incredible. That was the last time I rode it before I took it to DBK. Incredible. Yo, the nostalgia and the, and the history right here with the, the, the freestyle up, world is insane. What year was your uh, the flat three on the on the 120? Uh, 2008. Still put Blake, Bill Co., um, X Games 360. It's the sickest video. I remember we were all sitting there tripping. You said Benilco. Um, no, there's a no, no. Hold on. I got fat fingers, Boko. Yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to have Vinny do this, but he's over there. I thought you said you had crack fingers. 
It's crack fingers. Like one of the two. I'll look crash. Now keep going down. Uh, it's right here. Nah, keep going down. Right here. X nah, Games nah. 15. No, nah, no, nah, it's not that one. It's, it's X Games 14. Um, put Blake Bill K. Williams, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, you gotta put Blake in there. Blake. Oh, keep going down. There is that that one. The one where you're doing a three? Yeah, with the green gear. The one with the. Uh, no, no. Oh, I can't describe. Right here. No, 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 no. There. Right below the the one, one that's the at the dirt. bottom of the screen now. Get the thirty-seven seconds. This view is not that good. Cased but, it. This is. 14 and a half years ago. Wow. Barely. Dude, that was not. What's the camera dude not get out of my way? I'm like, move, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, what's up with that? Why he's are they boxing you run, in? Dude, he's still, dry, he's still riding his run. Yeah. This, yeah. this is the sick angle right here. That's reveling about the Look whole Look at his line. rear wheel. It never got past the halfway point of up. You see how far my knees go Insane, forward on the trail. Dude. Were you sponsored by DVS at the time? Oh, oh yeah. Just a little bit. Head to toe. Wow. <laughs> DVS was dope back in the day. Yeah, those those slip-on slippers were the only thing I wore to high school. Uh, that, that my, hot, uh, the hot replica ones. I actually rode, I rode for Etnies at the time, but my uh, my roommate, Jason Balkin, was the DVS team manager, so I would always steal his when I'd walk in the house. <laughs> They're the, be the best shoes. Yeah, the I best I wore them every day to school. Yeah. Bro, incredible, incredible conversation, bro. I appreciate you coming Thank by you. Twitch Oh, I'm not done yet, again. dude. I got one more question. No, go ahead. Get in I want to get into all your injuries. Because oh, oh, yeah. out of all my buddies that have been hurt, He's probably has the most injuries or like the most painful injuries out of everyone it's that all, still hurt him. It's always lower leg stuff. Like I was like a cat for so many years, like freestyle until 2019 much that I've been riding freestyle for. He would never get 15 hurt. years. I know I'd get I, everything from the knees down. I broke my collarbone in 2010 and then until 2019, everything was from the knees down. So I have blown my knees out. Like, But I remember your really bad crash in Baltimore, Boston, Baltimore, Baltimore yeah. due to her. Yeah. That one was that one I got hurt too. I don't think you rode the event. I, I, I got hurt jumping no, that table. No, no, that was how I you did, you did that. I don't know why you weren't riding that contest. I was there, though. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, but you, this crash was gnarly. Yeah, I did over-rotated a flip. I went to do the kiss of death, the rule of flip, and you got to over-rotate to do it. And, and at I, the time, he was only doing the he was the only one doing the kiss of death backflip. Everyone else was doing like a mediocre Superman. Chris like, Tedesco's like, oh, DVS want a photo of it. I'll stand down there and look through it. Man, I'm like, I'm going to have to pull real hard, do a big one. And I pulled as hard as I could, and I kind of come off the ramp a little sideways, just enough to freak me out at first, so I didn't jump off. So nothing slowed me down. So he pulled so I, as hard as he could to do a flip. I did a flip and a third, and I landed fully looped out behind the bike at the bottom of the landing and just exploded loaded my ankle tried to walk like three times i'm like i couldn't get up i'm like it's cuts nuts i can't be hurt he kept standing up and eating shit he'd stand up fall over stand up fall over i had a bag of nuts and bolts in my boot and it just went and after the third time i'm like fuck they put him on the stretcher and they're trying to wheel him out of there and he made him stop he's like wait i need to see what place i got because someone else was still yeah mason had to go yeah our buddy mike mason still had to ride and do his run and he's like i'm not going to the hospital until i know what place i got and i never got my trophy for another year i was pissed you never did you ended up getting second yeah second but like that ankle i anything that could go wrong did go wrong so i was in baltimore hospital for three days it was too swollen they couldn't operate They're like hey you gotta leave i'm like well where do you want me to go i'm from australia like i still hadn't had a place to live out here i was staying on potter's couch so I had to buy three tickets, fly to California, and then I got hooked up with the local moto doctor, Ryman. He's a good surgeon in that, but he does a bit of everything. So I really needed a foot specialist, ankle specialist, because my shit was exploded. His, his, it was probably one of the worst breaks I've ever seen. Yeah, broken talus, uh, broken tib, fib, uh, broke all five metatarsals, and she exploded my navicular to bits. And so literally your whole foot, your whole ankle, yeah. everything. So then I mean, I, I saw a photo this morning. It looks destroyed. Nuts. So then I got surgery, and I had a couple of screws in there, and then three wires sticking out, and then my best mate, Cam Sinclair, I accidentally stood on it 10 days later when I had the three wires sticking out and it blew up like a football. I didn't talk to him for like 10 days. I fucking hated him. He was so yeah. bad. And then, um, how did yeah, he step on it? What did he do? We're, we're on a bus from LAX to the rental car joint and he picked up a map. I don't know why he can't read. And he was walking backwards <laughs> to his seat to read the map and he just stomped on it. And I did, I just, on my head 10 days exploded. out of surgery yeah and then yeah blew up like a football they had the plastic balls on the end of the wire pins so the bandage wouldn't get caught it started to push them off because it was swallowing it swallowed up that gnarly Bro. and and then i got so then i got the those wires out i got a cast and like five days later i'm like this is so fucking itchy and i cut it off and it was all red and flaky i went to the doctors he swabbed it 
called me the next morning at 6.45. He's like, get straight to hospital. You got MRSA, which is the worst stuff you can have. So I had antibiotics for three days, surgery straight away, and they pulled the rest of the metal out. And then it just healed where it was sitting, which was on that massive angle. Crooked as hell. Like his, out of all my buddies' injuries, he had the worst. It looked like he had two left legs. Yeah, pretty much. So pr from that moment on, I'd never got my foot past 90 degrees. Like never got my toes towards my shin more than 90 degrees. His and then ankle's always out of the socket. Like imagine the pain of like your ankle being out of the socket and walking on it all the time. I mean, you got to airdrop me these photos I could show yeah. people. Yeah, like, it looks insane. It's I put up with it for like 15 years and then the last three years because my ankle had been out of the socket for so long, it just started to burn every day. And it changed him so much because like he's usually funny as hell always making everyone laugh talking shit like he was miserable dude. I get like, grumpy. yeah yeah i was, I was like in pain i didn't want to walk around at a venue i didn't want to walk around and do you stuff. didn't want to be around him like i'm like is bilko gonna commit suicide like he <laughs> is fucking going off i, the I deep wouldn't want to hang know? out like, because i knew i was in that mood so yeah. i kind of isolate just because i'm like i'm grumpy and no one wants to be around me because this just pisses me off so then he I, would I, he would have crutches to get to his bike he would ride his bike, crutch back, and he's like, okay, I'm out of here, guys. Because he knew if we were trying to go to eat or go do anything, he's like, I can't walk. I, I can't. Yeah, I can't stand up I can't long. go 10 more feet. Like, I can't do that. Bro, and how long did you live like this for? Like the last three years. And then uh, April, I got, I tried to get my heel moved across to make it a little better. And the heel went straight, but my foot jammed even further down. So my heel was like two inches off the ground. And my was it still out of the socket? Or yeah, it was it... still sitting in front of the socket. It was. And yeah. they didn't know that when they did Because surgery? my tib and fib were fused together and bent. So And dude, your, the, the fuse is like that Yeah, that, it ankle, started, right? that, that video I was showing That's from all that the, just growing back? Well, with the chiseling, they chiseled this tiny bit out that was joining them. That was in 2015. That's, That's what they were trying to pound out. It's it calcified to that whole thing. where, And that pushed my ankle forward out of the socket and further down. So I had to walk on tippy toes. So since April... April. Literally, his foot was like this when I he would had, walk. I had a two-inch foot. You see him on Instagram. It's like, oh, chicks want you to be taller. So they sell those foam pads for under your heel. I had to buy them just to put in the one shoe. How many of them did you have to put in one shoe? Just for just one. <laughs> it, it, was still, it still didn't work. So. Poor guy, dude. And then... Um, and you're still riding a bike I, this whole I, time. I didn't yeah. ride from April because I just didn't need to. And then I thought, I'll get some photos before I have this surgery. So I rode twice. And I could ride fine. I just couldn't walk after. But before he went in the surgery the first time... It was probably the best I've seen him ride. At Daytona? Yeah, in yeah, Daytona. I was, I was it was it. like the best I've seen him ride in years. Like, it looked like the old Bilko. Like, yeah, I was having fun. He was having fun again. So, yeah, then I got the surgery seven weeks ago. They had to lengthen my Achilles to get my foot back up because I've been down so How long. How do they lengthen your Achilles? I don't know if they put a bunch of slits in it or what. I, same as they did your PP. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, and then they had to Can grind Can you re-establish re what you just said since you said it with such a hard <laughs> accent? <laughs> same as your pork sword. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so then I, uh, I had to, um, they had to grind a bunch of my fibula out to get my ankle back in the socket and to lift it up. And then they just screwed a big plate to the front of my shin and on top of my talus, put a plate and 11 small screws in the plate, one big screw down through the tibia into the talus, and then two in my heel to hold it straight. Like That's what's, so gnarly. What's recovery look like? Well, it's been seven weeks now. I can fully weight bear. The bones are knitted together, but... Since I had that heel surgery in April and I never have really stood on my heel since then. And then now the big slice on the top of my foot, it's like eight inch incision. So I have so much numbness in my foot. So right now I, I doesn't feel like my foot, so I don't have any stability. So I, I should be able to ride by Christmas. I could ride tomorrow if you re if I really, really had to. It wouldn't be a good idea, but I would. And he would ride tomorrow yeah. if he really had to. And so I, I'll probably wait till after Christmas, but you're feeling when, when they slice through your, your muscle, your tissue, and the All nerves. All the nerves. Your nerve endings in your hands and fingers, there's, there's hundreds of little small nerve endings, so they take forever to knit back together. So for now, I've got a fully numb heel, and the bottom half of my back half of my foot is numb still, so... It's not too bad with a shoe on, but if like I'm in the shower, it just doesn't feel like my foot's on the ground. It feels like a dead foot. It's got to feel so weird. I, yeah. I was thinking about it too when we were talking about that driving down here today. I'm like, I wonder how it would be like when you're riding, if you can feel it on your foot peg or like, are you just going to look down at your foot and be like, okay, it's in a good spot? Yeah, it's probably just feel the inside of the boot on the, <laughs> on the side plate. But yeah, it still feels like it did earlier in the year because I can only feel the, the front of my foot, like my tippy toes touching the ground, even though my heel is. It just doesn't yeah, feel like it. So I, I kind of feel like I'm like I was before, except I'm not two inches taller on my left leg. <laughs> you're not leaning to the side. Yeah, because it was so bad. I literally put 
my to- the, my toes, I'd put them in the, the lowered part of the, the plug in the shower just because it would give me an extra little bit of space to put my foot in. Otherwise, I'd be standing lopsided because I'd be on my tippy toe that foot. So, so how long until you think your foot and your ankle are going to be healed enough to be flat on the on the floor? It already sits flat on the ground now, which is amazing. For and, me, you, and you're what, like half the amount of pain that you used to be in? I mean, uh, even less than half. Like, obviously, the surgery hurt, the incision, the screws. That was painful for like three, four weeks. But instantly, as that pain started to settle down, I noticed that my ankle was not on fire anymore. Literally, as soon as I woke up in the morning, if it didn't hurt from the day before, as soon as I got up and walked like 20, 30 steps, it had already started to ache. And then as soon as I did anything, it just, it'd be on fire. Which I know how bad your ankle is because like, I know how bad mine is. And I feel like the normal person, if they had my ankle, would be eating pain pills 24-7, like trying to like... I did go down that rabbit hole for a little bit, but that's not going to work. But... I, with knowing how bad mine is, I know yours is 10 times worse. So yeah. it's like, I understand why you went down that rabbit yeah. hole and I understand why you did all that. But it's like, because even mine fucking kills sometimes, yeah. dude. Like like you were saying, like just the blanket resting on your toes in the middle of the night, like you can't handle it. You got to take the blanket off your foot. Just, yeah. just that little bit of pressure of like what's already going on. Like mine feels like there's a hot knife in there 24-7 yeah. mm. and yours was way worse than mine. I was like a hot machete. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like it's, uh, and as I said, that, that, burning ankle pain that was with me 24 hours a day as long as I was awake I could feel it so that's gone already so now it's just getting the feeling back in my whole foot and obviously I don't have any range of motion just my metatarsals and my toes move but I mean some of the doctors like hey you're gonna limp after this surgery I've been limping for Bro, I've been years. limping my whole yeah. life <laughs> like you guys, you guys have so much metal in your body it's unreal no yeah. they took a lot of it out because of that staph infection so I've just got a plate and nine screws in my collarbone a couple of little hooks in my shoulders <laughs> Small screw in my uh, right, meta- right foot metatarsal and then six of my toes have pins in them to keep them straight because they just curled up. They're like a monkey hanging from a tree. They were just fully bent. Bad. And, and, then, and you're still excited to get on a bike. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I like airbag landing still though because they give that cushion for the, the busted up knees. and Cushion ankle. for the pushing. Yeah, I'm, ju- I'm just glad we're getting Bilko back with his normal personality because before yeah. you were always so grumpy. And, like I, I could tell you were in a lot of pain. That's why like, I would like not hang out as much because I don't want to be that grumpy dick that's hanging yeah. around i'm like i'm no fun to be around if i'm grumpy so i'm just gonna separate he's and one I, of the I funniest guys it. i know like hands down but now we're getting back to it i'm pretty happy so yeah it's uh i should have done this surgery a couple of years ago but yeah it's just yeah you, know. you just yeah i'll do it later or yeah, i'll do it, it next later. time i get hurt you know what i mean yeah. like you always say i'll do it later and then and then like, the trouble is with that first surgery being a failure i was in oz when i had that done and then to see a specialist a surgeon in australia it's like two three four months wait then another two three four months to get the surgery so i wish i could have had that surgery done you know in may just after the other one didn't work out and then it would have been good but i had to wait till september i ended up coming back here because i couldn't get surgery in australia till after christmas so mm. i'd still be limping around with that are you are you full time in Australia? Or no, US? I'm I'm a U.S. citizen, dual citizen. So um, I've been full time here. I wouldn't say full time because whenever we did Krusty tour in uh, New Zealand, in Australia, New Zealand, I'd go home, spend Christmas at home, and then the tour is usually in you know March, April, May, whatever, and then X Games are due tour started in June. So I'd go summer to summer. I'd mm. spend that time in Melbourne, then I'd come out here. But since COVID, since Australia turned into a bunch of pussies, I spent like <laughs> most of my time out here. It was just terrible. I I left Melbourne for the longest time I ever have. We were the most locked down city in the world. He, like, he went back to Australia after COVID. How many days were you there before your license got taken away? Uh, it was this last trip. I was only home for <laughs> I was only home for six weeks, but I lost it within the first three and a half weeks. So. Why is that? Uh, <laughs> we have tickets. we have speed cameras hidden under bridges. We're like you can't do four miles an hour over the speed limit in Australia without getting a ticket. So they've, they've got no real crime to worry about, no cartels, no gang, oh, there's a bit of gang violence, but no shootings and that. So they just give out traffic tickets the whole time, revenue raising. So I could probably name like 40 speed cameras in, in within an hour of my house that are usually hidden under overpasses or the cops. But they added a couple extra ones in when he was gone. They, what, their cameras were there, so I'd pin it, slow down, but they just upgraded them. They do point to point. So they time you from A to B. So if you get there in five minutes and 30 seconds instead of five minutes and 40 seconds when you're doing the speed limit, they average your speed and give you a ticket. So by the time I got... So the f- gnarly. So it oh, was what? three weeks later, I got the first ticket in the mail and I'd already done it four times So because I didn't know they were point to point. I was still pinning it, slowing down to 100 Ks, <laughs> going under the camera like, yeah, fuck you, I'm not getting a ticket. <laughs> got his and license And then sure enough, away. just every, every four or five days, another Vic Roads come in the mail. I'm like, fuck. And How long did your license get taken away for when you do that? This time was only, uh, I think, three months. But when I was 18, I lost it for 12 months for doing 60 Ks over the speed limit, not <laughs> indicating and no headlights at night. And then in 2014, I uh, I did a burnout in a 12-seater minivan and I had people like 
shaking the van to get it to do a skid. It didn't have enough power and someone filming it. So I got done with an aggravated burnout and I looked at him. I'm like, it's a 12-seater fucking diesel minivan. What are you talking about <laughs> aggravated? He's like, you had people filming and assisting. We got gnarly hooting laws. They wouldn't let Ken Block film Jim Carner in Australia because it had, it had encouraged people to do skids. We no love way. burnouts. No way. Oh, yeah, yeah, they love burnouts. So I think they were going to like Jim Carner 9 or 10. They were, going to, they were looking at doing it in Australia and they just said no because if you come here and do donuts and, and all the streets and that, all these dickheads, we're going to do donuts anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I lost my license for a, a year from that and they were going to impound the vehicle, but it was a rental car. Thank God they didn't. They would have left eight of us stranded in rural New South Wales. And then... Um, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, so I lost it for a year for that. And then I hadn't had a ticket for 10 years and I just went home and got those four fines in a month. So, and that's it. No yeah. more license. Then nah, he came back, back, back to here. the US. Yeah. Then he came back over here to the US. Yeah, but like here I just drive flat out and it's no issue. Like as long as it's everyone's fine. going the same speed, no one cares. Cops only care about the window tint, which I get because you could be hiding a gun. <laughs> so, and all of our windows are dark as hell. And we all have tinted windows. I, pe- I peeled mine off after I got pulled over two days in a row when I had my beam off. So I had no number plates, no uh, black headlights, taillights, fully black windows. I got pulled over two days in a row. Didn't get a ticket. Australia, they would have pulled it off the road. I remember um, being pulled over with Jeremy Lusk one day in our little piece of shit Toyotas. Yeah, and the, cop, the cop got him for tinted windows and he rolls his window up as the cop's talking. Rips it off. He goes, what fucking window tent? And the dude, the, the cop was so mad. He's like, what about that window? He's like, fuck. What about the tailgate that he had where he just used to wheelie onto it and it was just fully bent in? He didn't oh. use a ramp to load his bike. He just dumped the clutch and wheelied straight into the tailgate and it was fully bent and he just put the bike in. Easy. That's kind of lit. That was it's a good was getaway. Sick. It was way easier. That's a great getaway. They, they should make like a, a prefabbed ramp that just comes custom with your truck so you can just get away. They've got the <laughs> steps and the handrails and all those things now. Yeah, they made that for Deegan when he did his Ford deal because <laughs> he was too short. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys lift your trucks up. It's, it's like no one goes off-road in these trucks. They just jack them up four feet and think it's cool. Street princesses. Yeah, is he crazy right now? He is, dude. I, I, say I, that I, about I, a U. This, that's U.S. car culture. You're talking about a, <laughs> yeah, like, know, you're going to have the entire internet come. I right mean, that's now. fine. I had my van and I went to the off-road warehouse or where four drive parts. I'm like, hey, can I get some uh, some spindles, lower spindles for the front and something for the rear? He's like, okay. He's looking up. He's like, can I ask you a personal question? I'm like, yeah, why? He goes, why do you want to lower your vehicle? I said, why the fuck not? I want it to fit in my garage. I want to be able to park <laughs> in the airport without having to park, you know, catching a bus to the terminal. I said, it's practical. I said, all these dickheads lift their, their trucks up and they don't even go off-road. They don't even get a muddy. <laughs> So, it's so true though. Yeah. Don't even everyone, get money. Wants, everyone wants a Raptor just to look yeah. like they go off road. I mean, but it's they, clean look, as they hell. look cool and shit. But if my van wasn't going to fit in the garage, or I'd have to park freaking five minutes from LAX instead of at the terminal, stuff like that. Yo, very practical. Smart. Very smart. Well, when you have a shitty ankle like that, you think long term. You're like, okay, I need to go yeah. from A to A to B, which yeah, straight up, short as possible. Yeah. Well, one time I was getting to San Diego and I was running late, and there was no parks left, and there was only electric vehicles. So I just backed it in, and I put the electric cable in my fuel cap, and just left it there for four days. They didn't tell it. Smart, huh? Hey, honestly, now that you're telling me that, I might start using that because <laughs> yeah. there's always the electric car. Yeah, parking there's spots always that a bunch available. of them open. Honestly, I couldn't park I'm going to start using that. I couldn't park for <laughs> the, the back out because I it had a Hemi badge, even though it doesn't have a Hemi in it. They come off the Yokohama Ram truck when they they wrapped it. All the badges were there, so I just put the Hemi 6.7 liter badge on the back of my Chevy Express van. Hey, just but, puts the electrical charging thing just in his gas cap. Yeah, just shut the gas cap so it rested and held it in there. No one said anything. No one Bro, that's that genius. Hey, and if you turn your wheels full lock it's way way harder to tow your vehicle i always turn it full lock if yeah. i think i might get towed yeah. really yeah because mm-hmm. they can't lift it up as easy or oh, they I can't know get that. it out yeah i need that my car gets towed like once a week yeah too, too or road. like if i'll pull forward into a parking spot at the mall like i always park in like to go parking or whatever i'll always crank my wheel because when they go to pull it out it's going to go sideways yeah yeah car. they can't get it out that is genius because <laughs> i literally always park in the red wait i have another question for you now we got some life we go. far away <laughs> one more question is it multiple choice one more question for you it might be all of the above what is your opinion of the the electric bike craze that's going on right now with the starts and the Surons and all of these things? You the like it? Surons are sick because it's a, a a building platform and they do a gnarly stuff like that. Kids doing like seventy five backflips, yeah, he's flipping huge it. turn downs. Um, the electric bikes. I mean, as much as electric sucks and it doesn't have the noise, the technology in those things is amazing. They're an awesome dirt it's bike. I've seen Sheeny ride one and Patrick. And it, Patrick, like they just get on them and someone's like, oh, you can't hear it. Like you know, as a rider, I've only ridden one around a track, but just the 
the uh, what do you call it? That's like the like throttle response. Um, yeah, just your uh, muscle memory, just from cracking the throttle, and you can feel the bike, and you can feel it pull and the torque. Like you know how to ride that motorcycle if you could ride a petrol bike, and they're they're so easy to ride. And I like the handbrake for the rear up on the handlebars. Uh, they're just an awesome new thing. Like obviously there was like that Alta, that was a pretty average electric yeah. bike, but Stark is like built like a, a luxury. Stark car is brand. like the future of electric bikes. It's got like a, the logo where the petrol cap should be. Is a twenty four karat gold logo go in there and then just like with the mobile technology on it and we're, we're we're gonna bring the the dude that invented stark in for an interview yeah we have yeah. to i'm yeah. obsessed with these yeah bikes. he's coming in already i, I talked to him um, the other day you can't I drive can't, I can't. it's impossible it doesn't have a steering wheel i can't ride i can't ride a <laughs> <laughs> drive i can't ride a 450 in the, in the electric bike like the he Super can't do a clutch that's his problem yeah, yeah, yeah there you go oh yeah. the pit bike i could ride yeah there's no clutch it's fun i could rip around the i used to be a pit bike king yeah oh the pit bike's great i wish all bikes were like the pit bike yeah that, put it. Put a recluse clutch. Have your foot go, and then this, and then that's what I should put in this bike. Yeah, put a recluse clutch yeah, in. Okay. Yeah, a what? A recluse clutch makes it like a one ten, where you can pull up without pulling the clutch in. Mm -hmm. How? It changs the changes the the clutch setup. I what forgot about that because I've never. What are we one doing here? I got you. Oh Bilko my. got. Bilko got us. We're getting. Got I've been trying to figure this out hey, for months. I'm, I'm down to get anything to try. I want to run through the neighborhood. They, he brought me the Concrete Cowboys. I was ready to do wheelies with them down the street. <laughs> We're all here. Gotta, Everybody was out. The entire community. I couldn't even get the thing out of the first gear. I fall over. I look like a truck. <laughs> then I had to tell everybody, no, it's broken. I hurt my foot. Then I had to walk jump. the bike back. What a the jump. bike doesn't work. It's a brand new 450. Yeah, Bro, reflux. it went so fast. I got these cheetah pimp brands and I was ripping it down the street. <laughs> I was having the time of my life, dude. And Concrete then the Cowboys is a fair way to step up for your first time on the street. Yeah, on the oh, that's a big one. It was lit, dude. I thought I was going to do it. Like, I literally, I bought the sick helmet. Yeah, I thought, thought he fought it, but he really shit his pants. Bro, bro, I, <laughs> I really thought I was going to be the guy. Because I, I got to jump the jump at his house in the next two months we're not which jump <laughs> before before new year's 75 my, get fucked yeah my that's my deal before new year's no nah, no nah, I, I just like i'm not trying believe to believe me brother here, not believe, trying me, to judge you. believe me i can do it do you remember when nate's mechanic mikey c tried to jump nate's yz 250 just what'd he break he tim fib just tip split. Fib. He, he didn't even make it halfway up the back side of the landing yeah backside of no i can launch yeah but can you land anyway <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have the incredible, launching part's not hard it's the yeah. landing part. i have incredible stability in the air okay what if you're 40 feet short I'm going to have to figure it out. I could jump. <laughs> Flap your wings. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got for you, dude. Oh, man. What a good... This is great. Thanks I appreciate for having you coming me. This through, is fun. Man. I appreciate breakfast. Watching you guys walk around together. Should and we, I appreciate breakfast. Yeah. Should we, yeah, should, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Poor guy, dude. Should we uh, let you guys walk in the in the back behind Well, we don't together? actually walk, so... Anyway. I mean, there's a lot going on there. Should we say yeah, that for next time? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> See, look, it's gonna break the whoa, 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 whoa. No, I, was, I didn't mean that. I meant because you guys got oh, he's getting his sticks. Got the sticks. Where's dude? your sticks? Here. My sticks are right here. Here, come on. We'll, we'll end the podcast like this. Hey, <laughs> well, the, the step brothers over here. Yeah, yeah, get, get. This is dumb and dumber, dude. Hey, he powder coated I don't his. Even need my face. <laughs> look at this. This is what I'm dealing with here today. This is this is freestyle royalty right here. What an amazing. Hey, <laughs> Hey, this is the photo. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, Jackson Podcast, Twitch, Bill Co., you ready to hear it. We appreciate Woo! you guys' support. Leave a comment. Let us know who you guys want to see next. Yeah. We're out.